Hi, Guidepost. My name is Lindsay Davis. I'm a correspondent for ABC News, and I cover just about everything, a wide variety of story topics from natural disasters to man-made disasters, international stories from the earthquake in Haiti to the mall massacre in Nairobi. Uh, most recently, I've been doing a lot of the Me Too movement, uh, as well as race relations in our country, and I'm also a mom and a wife. I've always been um, a really healthy person as far as not having any kind of uh, major medical concerns. And so going into pregnancy and delivering the baby, I was always just so focused on praying for the health of the child. And everything seemed to go really smoothly. As a matter of fact, like when we got there and the baby came right away, initially the doctor came in and said, you know, everything looks great and you're gonna be able to go home within the next 24 hours. And then she left the room and about within a matter of minutes came back and it had a different tone, a different feel uh, entirely. And she said, you know, we, we got some of your, your labs back and, you know, we're concerned about, um, you know, your, your blood pressure and um, we, you have something called preeclampsia. And so now I ended up staying in the hospital for a week. And during that time, um, they were giving me different kinds of medication and my blood pressure just wasn't responding to it, it wasn't going down. And so it was a really frustrating, defeating feeling for the first time in my life that I ever felt so uh, helpless um, and just unable to really properly care for my newborn child, my firstborn child and, and only child. While I was in the hospital, the New York Times had published this story about white coat syndrome. And it was something that I was not familiar with, but the idea is that people can get, you know, kind of this elevated um, fear, anxiety when they're in a medical kind of situation as I was. I really need to be able to conquer this because whenever I hear those wheels coming uh, with the blood pressure monitor, it really gets me nervous. And so she said, you know what? Uh, we're gonna leave the monitor with you. We're gonna let you take your blood pressure yourself. And if you can, you can do it as many times as you want. If you can get the numbers down, um, then we're gonna let you go. I, I did it multiple times and ultimately I was able to get it one number below where she said the threshold was. And so then they ultimately did release me. And I, then I started just panicking, thinking maybe I didn't really have white coat syndrome. Maybe my blood pressure really was high because I have this medical issue and I'm not gonna be able to get better and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna have a stroke. It really was preventing me from having uh, this connection with my son because I was so worried that I was gonna die. It was just this, this postpartum anxiety that I was suffering from. I think that through my life I um, had always believed in God, but I hadn't had to really depend on him. I, I think that it's so easy for us to be faithful when everything around us is good, right? But it's in those dark times and it's in um, times when you really feel like you're perhaps hitting rock bottom and, and feel so hopeless um, that I think that your relationship with God goes to a different level. Um, I have this really well-worn one-year Bible. So I started reading different scriptures and you know some of them I would try and memorize for that day so that it would just help me when I started feeling anxious. Among the scriptures it was uh, Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, uh, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. That was my favorite one. That was really because it was just saying yeah, God has a plan for me. Um, and, and it's not to harm me. And, um, and I needed to just, I needed that hope back and the blood pressure started going down. And so, um, I'm not sure, I would, I would guess that it was maybe over after about a two month period where it was really back to normal and I could say that I was myself again. Growing up as in my career of, of journalism, I always had different um, benchmarks of what I decided was gonna be my, my goal for success, the measurement. And so I had said, by the time I'm 25, I wanna be in a top 25 market. By the time I'm 30, I wanna be at the network. And now, since I've had a child, it's really changed what I, how I would define success. And now for me, what's most important is if I'm able to raise a son who loves God. That, to me, is now the benchmark.